Good morning, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Bill Lester. I'm with University of Florida IFAS Extension Service here in Hernando County, which is in West Central Florida. And today we're going to be talking about how to grow pomegranates in Central Florida. So most of this information I'm going to give today as far as the timing, the soils, everything else is geared for Central Florida. Uh, these pomegranates can be grown in South Florida and North Florida also, just the timing is going to be a little bit different. And obviously, you may have somewhat different soils than what we have right here in Central Florida. So you may have to tweak the information a little bit. At the very end, I do have um, a couple of links to University of Florida websites that has a huge amount of information on growing pomegranates, varieties, everything that you really need to know. So let's go ahead and get into it here. So when it comes to pomegranates, probably all of you have at least heard of pomegranates. Most of you have tried eating them, but some of you may not be really familiar with them. It's kind of a, a unusual fruit, even though you can purchase them at the grocery stores. It's usually for only a short period of time during the holidays, you know, from like Thanksgiving through Christmas or so. You can buy pomegranate juice at grocery stores now, and I've bought it before and drank it. It's very, very tasty. But pomegranates originally are native to Central Asia. So um, certain areas like uh, Persia, Babylon, Egypt, and India is where they were initially grown. And we have information going back like to 3000 BC, the pomegranates were being cultivated and eaten back then. Pomegranates are mentioned in the Bible in both the Old Testament and New Testament, I believe. So we've been growing them and eating them for quite some time. Uh, I mean, uh, after a certain point, the, the trees were moved to Europe and they were grown quite a bit in Spain. And then when the Spanish settlers first came to the U.S., especially to California, they brought pomegranates with them. So pomegranates are kind of one of those edible crops that were um, native to Central Asia, but since then have been moved all the way around the world and wherever the weather and the conditions are favorable for growing them and producing them, people do that. So we see that happen with a lot of different fruits. So there are a lot of benefits to growing pomegranates. Um, don't really wanna be trying to give too much um, medical information here. And this is straight from a University of Florida fact sheet. But pomegranates are very, very healthy for you to eat. Research has shown that they have antioxidant, antibacterial, anti-inflammatory, antiviral, and anti-carcinogenic properties. So that sounds like a pretty healthy fruit right there. Uh, they, they are rich in antioxidants, thiamine, riboflavin, niacin, vitamins B6, B9, vitamin C, calcium, iron, magnesium, phosphorus, potassium, and zinc. So it's obviously a, a healthy and tasty fruit. Um, in case you're curious, the edible part of a pomegranate is technically called an aril, A-R-I-L. And that's the edible part of the fruits. The arils are kind of juice-filled orbs, which also contain the seeds in the center. So I'm not gonna get too deep into how to clean and prepare a pomegranate for you to eat it, a lot of information online. It is kind of tricky. You cut it open, you break it open. If you do it into a bowl of water, the white pithy material on the inside of the fruit will float to the surface. The arils, the part that you're gonna to wanna to eat, sink to the bottom. It's a little bit of work. I've done it before, but it's not really difficult. So the ideal climate and soil for pomegranates in central Florida, Technically, most varieties of pomegranates prefer cool winters and hot, dry summers, kind of a Mediterranean climate. Because if you think about where these uh, trees are native to, Central Asia, they're grown a lot in the Mediterranean region, they're grown in North Africa. Our weather is not like that here in the summer. Here in the summer in Central Florida, very hot, but it's also very wet very humid, 
and that can cause some problems with growing uh, pomegranates. So we're going to talk a little bit about varieties and which ones are going to do well here and which ones probably won't do very well. The different cultivars vary in frost tolerance. And this, to a certain extent, has to do with um, the wintertime weather that we are experiencing. Because pomegranates are deciduous, which means that they naturally drop their leaves in the fall. And during the winter, they sit there with either very, very few or no leaves on them. So if the tree is dormant and fairly mature, it's more, it's been in the ground for more than a year or two and a fairly decent size, they will take some pretty cold weather, temperatures down to about 18 degrees or so. If the tree has come out of dormancy, it started getting new leaves on it, starting to grow for the spring, and we have one of those surprise, very late winter uh, freezes where the temperatures drop down to freezing or below, at temperatures just a little bit below freezing, the tree could be seriously damaged at that point because it's not dormant. So cold temperatures in the middle of winter when the tree is dormant, it takes fairly cold temperatures. This is not like growing bananas or mangoes or something very cold sensitive because it does go into proper dormancy during the winter but it can be damaged by late frosts and uh, late freezes. So when you're choosing the right variety, for any of you who have ever bought fresh pomegranates at the grocery store, the variety that you always see is a variety called Wonderful. Wonderful is the name of the variety. And that variety was originally developed right here in Central Florida, but it does not do well here because it's a very late maturing variety. It matures and you harvest it in the fall and in the winter. That's why when they do harvest them, you see them at the grocery store from around Thanksgiving till around Christmas or so. Now, the wonderful variety grows very well in California because in California, you have Mediterranean type weather during the year. It grows well, it flowers well, it produces well. Uh, California is sunny, low humidity, dry, except, you know, during the winter when they get, some, you know, their rainy season out there. But wonderful does not do well here. So it's not a good choice for Central Florida because it does mature so late in the season. You really want to look for varieties that mature earlier in the season. And there are some. Um, so when you're looking at the right variety for your yard, University of Florida is doing a lot of research on pomegranates. It's being seriously looked at and even utilized as a commercial crop here in Florida because growers here in Florida are always looking for new things to grow to replace citrus. Citrus, you know, is traditional in Florida but you've probably noticed that we grow far less citrus here in Florida now because of all the diseases, pests, citrus greening. Takes a lot of inputs, not nearly as profitable as it used to be. So growers are always looking for things that they can grow either instead of citrus or along with citrus to increase their profits with. And they, we see peaches, plums, nectarines right now if you want to go out this weekend, there are you pick peach groves all around Florida. It's kind of peach season here in Florida. So go out there and support your local growers and you pick some peaches, plums, and nectarines and help them out. But pomegranates are being looked at for that. So they're doing a lot of research. And like I said at the very end, I think about the last slide, I do have some links to other information. University of Florida has an entire website filled with information on pomegranates. Whatever you might want to know about them is on there. So pomegranates, obviously, you could buy them online. There are a lot of nurseries online that you can order things from, but be very careful because they may be offering, you know, wonderful or other varieties that are late maturing that are not going to be the best for this area. But for the people who are participating in our class and are getting their three pomegranate trees slash bushes slash shrubs as a part of this class, the variety you're getting is 
Salavatsky. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, but Salavatsky is one of the varieties that University of Florida has found performs very well in the home landscape here in Central Florida. It's fairly early maturing. It has very good cold tolerance. It's tolerant to a certain extent to our hot, humid, wet, rainy conditions here. And it's one of the varieties that's really going to do about the best here in Central Florida. So when you're preparing the site to go ahead and plant your three uh, pomegranate bushes, or if you're looking to buy one online or at a nursery, you need to prepare the site appropriately. So um, with soil preparation, pomegranates ideally like a very deep, slightly acidic, moist soil. So here in Central Florida, um, we generally do have very deep, sandy soils. That's why Central Florida is grow, we're able to grow citrus so well here. Pomegranates like the same kind of deep soils. Now, you may want to get a soil test or have an idea of what your soil pH is in your yard because pomegranates like it slightly acidic. If your soils are alkaline, pomegranates aren't going to be really, really happy with your soil. Something that you can do is add peat moss to the planting site. So when you're preparing where you're going to plant the shrub, dig and loosen the soil out really wide. Loosen it up, fluff it up, work if you need, if your um, soil is naturally a little alkaline with a high pH, you can work in some peat moss to lower the pH naturally. You probably want to work in compost because most of us don't have really rich soils here. If your yard is very, very sandy, you have a very sandy soil, work in some compost. If you have a heavy soil and you don't have great drainage, that's going to be a problem. Pomegranates do need good drainage. So if on your property, every time it rains, the rain piles up and just sits there for a day or so, you're going to have some problems. You're going to have to prepare the soil. You're going to have to make some kind of raised mound to grow your pomegranate and keep the roots above standing water. But chances are not many people here in Central Florida have that issue, so that hopefully that's not much of an issue for you. Uh, pomegranates do grow in partial shade, but they're going to grow better and fruit much better in full sun. And when it's dry, you're going to have to water it at least once a week. Now, when you put a new plant in the ground, you have to water it once a day because until that plant gets established, sends its roots out far and wide, and is able to gather water from the soil all the way around it, you're going to have to water it every single day or the type of weather that we're having right now in Central Florida, where it's very sunny. I'm looking out the window. I don't see a cloud in the sky today. Very sunny, very dry you may have to water young plants more than once a day. So make sure they don't dry out initially when you plant them, and that way they're gonna become well-established and do better. Once we get into regular summer rains, you're probably not gonna to have to water it, but they say it needs to be watered at least once a week to help get it off to a good start and keep it going. So when you're planting it, Planting time, you can plant these pretty much any time of year. Um, spacing, you probably want to plant them at least 10 feet apart. Pomegranates are not, are not naturally a tree. Naturally, they form kind of a dense, bushy, deciduous shrub. So like I said, they're deciduous. They're going to naturally drop their leaves in the fall and then sprout new leaves in the spring and then sit there over winter with either no leaves at all or very, very few leaves that kind of hang on. They can get very easily six to 12 feet tall. Uh, a well cared for one can get as high as 20 feet tall. Over time, we're gonna talk a little bit more about pruning in a moment. You could prune it to more of a tree shape or you can keep it more of a shrub shape. Most people kind of keep them as a shrub uh, it's a little bit easier to manage and maintain that way. Might be a little bit more productive in the long run as far as more flowers and more fruits. And then, um, like I said, right after you plant it, you do have to keep it well watered 
You don't have to fertilize it initially right after you put it in the ground. And don't put fertilizer in the planting hole that you're preparing to put your newly purchased plant in because a newly planted tree or shrub or bush is not able to take up fertilizer right away. It needs to spend all of its time and energy getting established and sending its roots out into the soil before it starts worrying about taking up fertilizer. So don't put fertilizer in the planting hole. What's gonna happen is that fertilizer is gonna end up where we don't want it to, probably in the groundwater eventually, and we don't wanna do that. So care and maintenance after you get your pomegranates planted, watered, rainy season comes along, they're growing. Like I said, the ones that we have here at our office are growing very, very well. I mean, they love this kind of weather that we are experiencing right now. So longer term, like I said, it does turn into kind of a multi-trunk bushy shrub. You really don't want to prune it at all for at least a year. So just let it grow, let it go. Don't worry too much about pruning it right off the bat. They could potentially get to be 20 feet tall at maturity. But if you want to, over time, train it to more of a um, single stem tree-like shape, as it grows taller, you can start removing the um, branches at the very, very bottom to um, turn it into a bit more of a, a trunky tree kind of shape. It's really not best to try to turn it into the equivalent of a small oak tree or a small maple tree. They really don't grow that way naturally. They will send up new branches and side shoots off the bottom. Any of the ones that come up really, really low, like almost ground level, feel free to go ahead and prune off. That way you can leave a little bit of room at the base of the shrub. And then definitely once a year, probably in the spring, Take a hard look at it. When I tell people about how to go about trimming any kind of shrub or bush, I tell them, first thing you want to do is stop, take a long, hard look at it, and look for any dead branches, broken branches, snapped branches, and go ahead and think, okay, I'm going to take them off first, prune them off first, then look at the all the other branches. If you have a lot that are rubbing against each other and kind of damaging each other, take off one or the other. And that's really all the pruning you're gonna to have to do. It will stay a fairly thick bush and that's fine. When it comes to pest and disease management, really doesn't have an awful lot of problems here in Florida. It does get fungal leaf spots, basically a leaf blotch disease. So you're probably gonna to wanna to purchase and have handy uh, fungicide for during the summer, because during the summer, when it starts to get really warm, rainy, and humid, you're going to have fungal leaf spot diseases on a lot of your different plants. So pomegranates are no exception. They will get spots on leaves also. You're probably going to have to spray a couple times with the fungicide during the summer. Make sure you get something that's labeled to be used on pomegranates. Some good choices to look at would be a copper fungicide. That's a very old, widely used traditional fungicide that's very effective and is labeled for a ton of different crops. Or another one that's named Dacanil that you can find at big box stores or online, but double check to make sure that's labeled to be used on pomegranates. Uh, the only insect pests that pomegranates generally get is scales on occasion. So keep an eye on your pomegranates like you should be doing with everything in your yard. Go out there on some kind of regular basis, check them, turn over the leaves, look through the branches. Oh, I see scales, I'm gonna spray with insecticidal soap. I see maybe white flies or aphids or some other kind of problem. Um, pomegranates don't generally have a lot of insect and disease problems here in Florida, believe it or not. Seems like everything else does. Irrigation, very important after the plant is established. When it's really dry, it needs to be watered deeply at least once a week. I'd probably go twice a week. Now, remember here in Hernando County, we do have um, irrigation restrictions. 
So you're only allowed to run your in-ground irrigation once a week. So your pomegranate tree, if you go out there with a garden hose, that's perfectly fine. You won't get in trouble for that. If you fill up your um, sprinkler can and go out there and water it with that, that's fine also. It needs to be watered well and very deeply at least once a week if it's not raining. Now, pomegranates are fairly heavy feeders when it comes to fertilizer. So after your plant becomes established, so don't rush out there on the day that you plant it, but maybe a month or two after that, start fertilizing very, very lightly with a 10-10-10 fertilizer. Those are very easily found at big box stores. Um, if you have gotten a soil test done and your soil test comes back and says that you have high levels of phosphorus in your soil, that is going to be the middle number, the middle 10. So if you have plenty of phosphorus in your soil already, you could buy a 10 0 10 and I have seen that formulation at big box stores. So 10 0 10 or 10 10 10. We're talking small amounts here for just a couple pomegranates. Uh, but you also want to um, fertilize with a micronutrient spray a couple times a year. So you can get at a big box store or online micronutrient sprays. And what these are is, is a liquid fertilizer that you're going to mix a small amount in a gallon of water and go out there and spray your tree with it. It's sold for and used a lot with citrus. The same micronutrient spray works just fine with pomegranates. This contains all the different micronutrients that keep citrus and pomegranates healthy. Things like, um, off top of my head, iron, zinc, um, magnesium, manganese, all those things that fruit trees need in very tiny amounts. But if you do this at least twice a year, you know your pomegranate is going to have access to all those micronutrients. It's going to grow well. It's going to grow healthy. And then winter protection, like I said earlier, these trees, these plants are fairly cold tolerant. They are more cold hardy than citrus. So citrus takes temperatures down to freezing or a bit below before they start to be damaged. Uh, pomegranates generally take lower, but if it's during the time of year, either it hasn't gone dormant yet or it's come out of dormancy and is starting to grow in the spring, if we get a bad freeze then, it's only going to be okay down to about freezing. Below that, it's going to be pretty seriously damaged and has to be covered. A mature pomegranate that's established in the ground and dormant in the middle of winter, think um, Christmas freeze, can take temperatures down to as low as 18 degrees. So you can cover it. That's obviously not going to hurt it. But whether you have to or not really depends on how cold it's going to get and what, what situation your pomegranate is in at that point in the winter. So here's a picture of what the flowers look like on a pomegranate. Pomegranate bushes, keep in mind, are very attractive, kind of um, unobtrusive, non-distinctive, dense shrubs. They flower, they get very, very pretty orange flowers, kind of orange or dark red. So even if you live in a homeowners association type neighborhood, very easy to work something like a pomegranate into your landscape. Put it out there, tell your neighbors it's a shrub. They're probably not gonna notice anything about it that doesn't look out of place. I know that there are certain neighborhoods where they have restrictions against fruit trees. For some reason, they believe that um, Fruit trees are going to attract um, more rats to the neighborhood, which really is not true. Obviously, if you leave a lot of fallen fruit on the ground, rats, along with other animals, will eat it. It will make them happy, but it doesn't necessarily bring rats to your neighborhood. We all have rats in our neighborhood, hopefully very few of them, but they're out there in the middle of the night. But pomegranates can be very easily worked into your landscape no matter where you live. Um, they are naturally self-pollinating, which is nice because they don't need cross-pollination. You don't have to have different varieties of pomegranates 
to get fruit. If you have just one pomegranate bush, the flowers pollinate each other. Um, they're attracted to bees. So if we're all encouraging pollinators to our yard, that's great. You don't have to worry. The bees will find them and they will pollinate them. For harvesting, the uh, Salavatsky variety and most other varieties that you're going to grow here in Florida, they mature in North Florida from July to about November. So here in Central Florida, it's going to be a little bit earlier than that. So they're going to uh, leaf out and flower in the spring and generally you're going to harvest them from late summer into early fall here in central florida if there's anybody who lives a little bit south of here even pinellas hillsborough county and definitely south of there you can grow pomegranates in south florida uh summer is going to be pretty tough on them but they're going to flower and fruit a little bit on and off all year long So in conclusion, pomegranates are growable here in Central Florida. The actual bush, the actual plant is not difficult to grow. Just make sure that you um, keep soil conditions in mind when you're planting it. You probably wanna get a soil test done first for anybody here in Hernando County, contact our office or shoot me an email. We'll send you information about how you can go about getting a soil test done. If you live in a surrounding county, Citrus County, Pasco, Sumter, anywhere else, you have your own extension office and they do soil testing in your county, but we all do it differently. Some offices do it in-house at their office. We send it to Gainesville, to the University of Florida Soil Testing Lab, or we have you send it to them. We give you the information, the form to fill out everything else. So if you'd like to get that done, contact us. I can point you in the right direction. Um, here's a picture of a little tiny pomegranate fruit. They Sometimes it takes a couple of years for your bush to grow to the size where they're gonna flower and fruit, but they will. We had a, a master gardener a couple of years ago that had several in her front yard and they got quite large and they flowered and fruited she got pomegranates off of it. So it's something great to try to kind of incorporate into your landscape to add a little bit of variety. Um, here is uh, some links to some additional information. All of this, if you just Google it, you'll be able to find it. For anybody who is watching this either live or recorded, if you email me and I'll have my email in just a second, I'll go ahead and send you a PDF of today's presentation. That will have the links in it. University of Florida has a fact sheet on pomegranates. They have an entire website on pomegranates with a lot of information in there. Part of it's geared towards commercial growers, part of it for homeowners, but homeowners can benefit from the commercial grower information also. UF has a uh, fact sheet on growing pomegranates commercially in Florida. If you're thinking like, hmm, I think I'd like to try growing 10 acres of pomegranates as a commercial growth. UF has all the information you're gonna to need to do that successfully. And as always, if you go to HernandoExtension.com, that is our webpage that has a full listing of all of our upcoming classes, links, information. Is it free? Is it in person? Is there a charge? Hopefully we remember to put all the information there if I ever forget something, send me an email because sometimes I forget to put down the day, the time, little things like that. So um, here is my email, wlester at ufl.edu, and I will put that in the chat also in just a moment. And if anybody has any questions here live, um i see that everything is recording correctly i love that when i actually remember to to hit the button and everything works um lisa let me write down your name and
I will go ahead and send you PDF of the slides. And Sandy asks, how often should I fertilize with the 10, 10, 10? After the plants get established. So I would give them like about a month before you start fertilizing them at all. After that, they recommend, they recommend fertilizing it every two months lightly with 10, 10, 10. And of course, that's during the growing season because they go dormant during the winter from October until when they perk up and start putting out new leaves in generally March here is when things start to regrow and, you know, in the spring, you don't have to fertilize from October until March. But other than that, every two months, light fertilizing with 10, 10, 10, and at least twice a year with the micronutrient spray. I got a bottle of that because I have a Meyer lemon tree. So very important for pomegranates, very important for citrus if you have citrus also, and really doesn't hurt any other kind of fruit trees to go ahead and hit it with the uh, micronutrient liquid foliar spray. So if we have any other questions, uh, Chris, I see your hand up. If you wanna go ahead and type in your question in the chat box, if you look at the bottom of your screen and click on chat, you can see the chat. So I will give everybody maybe one more minute or so here to think about your questions and go ahead and share them. Otherwise, what we will do for the people who registered for this class is because we're recording it, Later on this afternoon, I'll send the link to the recording to everybody because a lot of people obviously work during the day or they're busy during the day. They weren't able to watch it live or they missed the beginning, they missed the end, whatever it might be. If you like my voice and you want to watch it a couple of times, that's great. We'll send the link out to everybody. For the people who register for the class to pick up your plants, you can come by our office right now if you like we have plants here come by pick them up we're going to have them here every day that we're open which is monday through friday eight to five um if you need the address if you need um let me go ahead and start putting some things here in the chat box for everybody who's watching us live Go ahead and shoot me an email. We'll send you the address. We'll send you directions to the office. If you would like, we will have plants at our Master Garden Nursery this coming Saturday. And we are having a huge Earth Day celebration also. So bring the family, bring the kids. We're going to have kids activities. We're going to have presentations on and off during the day. So come by, buy some plants from the nursery, pick up your pomegranates and make a day of it. Uh, we are not open on Sunday. Our office is closed on Sunday. The nursery is closed on Sunday. If you have to make special arrangements to pick up your plants, send me an email. We can work it out. We're just encouraging people to either make arrangements or pick up your plants within the next week or so because they're going to grow better in your yard than they do in our office underneath fluorescent lights and uh, indoor temperatures and everything. Kathleen asks a really good question. Should we support the tree when it gets larger? You can, but it probably doesn't need it because it's gonna grow after a certain point into a multi-branch kind of twiggy shrub that holds itself up. If, and if you plant it correctly, it should stay fairly straight. So generally they don't need support if you wanna put in a support, that's not gonna hurt. Drive a stake in the ground a little ways out so you don't damage roots when you put it in the ground. Uh, put some kind of support, cloth, the part that goes around the stem of the plant, you should make sure that it's cloth. The rest could be string or rope to give it a little bit of gentle support to keep it growing upright and in the right direction till it fills out some. 
But the ones I've always seen when they get larger don't have any kind of support on them. They naturally grow into kind of a nice stout, twiggy, what looks like a landscape shrub in somebody's yard. So Shannon says, uh, where do I pick up the plants? At the master gardener or nursery on Saturday or at the extension office? Yes, both. You can pick it up on Saturday at the master gardener nursery or Monday through Friday here at our office. So we're trying to make it as easy for you as we can. I encourage you to stop by the nursery on Saturday. Weather should be beautiful, but if that's not convenient for you, you can pick them up from the office. We have people here from eight to five, Monday through Friday. We have the, the, the list of everybody's name. We'll go ahead and check you off the list. If you can't pick them up and you have to send a relative or neighbor in, that's fine if they give us your name so we know how to check you off the list, we're good. So we try to make this as easy as we can on y'all. Danielle asked a good question. Are you planning more growing groceries classes? Yes, we definitely are. These have been very popular. We have to limit it to about 45 or so people, but each one has sold out. So um, we have a lot of people who uh, participate, new people, other people. I, I'm sure that there's at least somebody who's gone to each one and gotten each and every one of the different plants. I'm thinking when we do this again, and we probably won't do it next month, we'll probably do it the month after that. Um, we're probably going to look at trying to do muscadine grapes. They do really, really well here in Florida. A couple problems, pruning, you have to get the pruning and the trellising right. But other than that, muscadines can do really, really well here. During the late summer, there's a lot of you pick muscadine places. Some people don't like muscadines. Uh, I do. I like the flavor. I like the taste. I like the muscadine wine too. Not for everybody, and that's fine, but that's probably another uh, good winning crop to pick. Chris asked how long until I can expect these to flower. These are definitely not going to flower until next year. Although I would think that if you take good care of them, get them in the ground soon, get them up and growing all summer long, they should grow quite a bit. They may flower as early as next spring. So I can't, I'm not going to guarantee that. I'll come back, you know, next spring and yell at me, but hopefully they'll be flowering by next spring. They can at that point. 